Michael Robles is about to go live online. Catch All Out Monster Hit Music, All Out Celebrity Interviews, All Out Showbiz and Sports News, All Out Fun, an exclusive on The Monster. Catch the stream on The Monster Facebook page at RX931, The Monster YouTube channel at RX931, and twitch.tv slash monster RX931. Your All Out host, Michael Robles. Stand by and enjoy the program. Oh yeah, we're coming to you live. You know how we go. 17 floor shot of 2000 here on the Monster. And yo, this is something that we are looking forward to when it comes to her journey. You know, we watch her in the noontime variety show. Then we watch her get married. We are mesmerized by the summer bod and the summer goals and the journey through motherhood. And this is actually her comeback. That is the film that we are going to be watching, but she's going to take us on a journey. And this is the first time for her to actually part of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome here on All Out on the Monster, none other than Colleen Garcia Crawford. What's up? Hello. Hi. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> Great to, you know, for you to take time to actually join us here on the show. This is the first time that you're here. You know, last time we it had is. Billy before and uh, oh, he was talking okay. about, it, yeah, about us, uh, his journey with the music. And everything, you know, but before anything else, how's everything? How's everything going so far? Oh, everything is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm still, you know, in that kind of phase where I'm just trying to balance everything right now. Because for the longest mm -hmm. time, it's just been motherhood <laughs> and absolutely mm -hmm. nothing else. And right now, you know, I've been getting back to work and the baby's been... Um, turning into a little man so he's not mm -hmm. so much of a baby anymore and it gives me a little bit of space and a little more room to rediscover the things that I like so here I am you know back to doing the things that I used to do <laughs> and it's cool that you know when you we talked about mother motherhood that is you you really share it you share the journey and we're not a lot oh, of yeah. artists do that you know, they share you but they like to keep it private but for you, what was it about sharing motherhood openly, your journey to everybody? Well, because, you know, I, I just love sharing all the beautiful things because it's just, I mean, why wouldn't I want to share it? You know, I mean, I understand people who want to keep it private and everything. And I understand the need for it, too, at the same time. But mm -hmm. I'm just so overflowing, you know, that I have to share it. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I can't just keep it because every it, this is my life right now. And I've always been kind of you know, big into sharing things in my life. And this is practically everything that my life is right now. So to not be able to share it would just, you know, would not be giving people a glimpse of what my life truly is like right now. But the thing is, um, I try not to share just the filtered, pretty mm. glamorous parts of it because motherhood is not glamorous. It's so far from it, man. Like it's just, it, it's, it's hard work. It's, mm sleepless nights it can be very exhausting very taxing and i never shy away from sharing those things because i like to see it you know i like to mm. see it um on instagram or wherever where people share it because i feel like oh you know there's someone i can relate to and mm. i don't feel alone and if i could you know just add on to that for all the other moms or other women out there then you know it's something that i i want to put out in the world mm. And it, it's so perfect, Women's Month. But, you know, we celebrate humanity every single day. Not should it not be a, just oh, yeah. a month. You know, it's celebrating it. But, you know, it's a viral. It's a photo of you. I think Billy is the one that posted it, that you were asleep and you had your baby beside you. And Oh, my and, gosh. You know... I got so pissed at him when he posted <laughs> I got so pissed that I was like, why, why are all the most unflattering pictures I have on the internet from you? <laughs> like everything, <laughs> always, whether he's greeting me for my birthday or everything, it's always the worst pictures from him. But then I saw the caption and I was like, okay, fine, I'm not going to get mad. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, it is a journey, sleepless nights. You did mention it's being hands-on, both of you guys. And you rule me, Billy. I mean, when it comes to you taking care, I mean, is he like, she yung mas nahihirapan, he has to run here, he has to run there, lahat gusto ni Colleen, kailangan. What's Billy's well, role? Well, okay, I mean, he has a huge role. Um, mm -hmm. He Amari looks to him for all the fun things, for all the happy mm -hmm. things and everything. Because he's I mean, he's not always home. I'm I'm home like 
99% of the time <laughs> and Billy is home like you know whenever he's not at work and whenever Amari sees him he's just so excited so he, he always wants to do something fun so me I'm just you know always so exhausted so I pass him on to Billy when it's time to like <laughs> you know do all the active stuff and everything because I'm doing that the whole day with him anyway but then at the end of the day you know Amari's highlights getting to see his daddy of course because you know it's the the one time in the day that he gets to see him so um yeah that but he helps me a lot as well like with with everything and by everything i mean you know from the tiniest things to like you know carrying stuff or getting stuff for me or ordering whatever you know it's just the tiny stuff that accumulate to to enormous stuff because it takes uh. a huge load out of me um at night forget it <laughs> forget it like yeah i just gonna I, I will sleep vicariously through him <laughs> but so at night you know that's that's just it's not doable for him. I mean, <laughs> I mean for you guys, the dynamic of it, I could see probably later on is that, so Billy's the fun parent and you're going to be like the disciplinarian mom? I am not going to accept that. No, I don't accept <laughs> that. <laughs> I think, no, I think that he's actually more strict than I am. Mm-hmm. He's still more strict than I am. And like, I think that it's not so much that he's the funner one. I think he's just the one with energy. <laughs> he's the one with sleep. <laughs> Like, you know, you're gonna sleep, okay. You do all of the, the stuff that actually requires energy, <laughs> but it's amazing, it's amazing, you know, the, the way you guys have been handling parenthood, your relationship as well throughout. Kumbaga, a lot of people, you guys could be the blueprint in show business as far as a successful. Oh my gosh, we're so far from it. Diba? I mean, you guys and and uh, Ia Villanya and uh, Drew. And yes, ito ako kayo, yes. Eh. Sa mga hands-on parents, which is really, really cool. Now, you know... It's so nice those, seeing it, right? right? Yeah, it's great. It's so inspiring. I mean, for those who are tuned mm. in, we have Colleen Garcia Crawford. She is joining us. Now, one thing that I wanted to ask, kasi hindi ko alam yung... I mean, nakita lang namin, love story ninyo ni Billy. Okay, and then they're getting married. I'm like, wow, so beautiful. And then they have a baby. She was pregnant. But how did you and, and Billy, how did you guys meet? Oh my gosh. Well, What's the story I mean, behind that? Most of the people know, actually, we met through Showtime. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't have a choice but to meet. <laughs> so, we met through Showtime. And um, I've told this story some time ago. And mm-hmm. I, I, I did mention this, that Billy was the person I was least closest to on the show. Mm-hmm. And it's because he was rarely ever there. And, you know, if you're a solid showtimer and you've been watching ever since, you would know that Billy was always absent and he was really made fun for it, you know, for always missing work because he was either drunk or mm-hmm. <laughs> doing something <laughs> apart from work. So mm-hmm. he was always not at work, you know, he was not ganado to go to work. He was just in a different headspace during that time. So mm-hmm. that was him, you know, and for me, like, I was always the one being bullied and he was like the number one bully. He would like, he would bully me every day. And there was a point wherein I dreaded going to work. Like I genuinely dreaded going to work. Like I'd I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, I have to go to work today. I'm just gonna be bullied. And you know, I like at some point it just felt like, you know, like I felt being weighed down by it. Like truly, mm. okay. Like it's not. I mean, yeah, it's funny, but. Part of, you can't you do know, it on a daily basis, time, like, right? On a daily basis. It was basis, not right? funny for me. It was not funny for me. Like, <laughs> like it was funny for everyone but me. So, okay, fine. He would bully me every single day. I hated him. Like, there, like I found him so mayabang. And then, like, he was a completely different person too. And there was a time I remember that um, I prepared um, Christmas gifts for everyone, right? And of course, he didn't go to work anyway. So, I just did not end up giving him a christmas gift and i gave everyone a gift except for him wow everyone but him yeah so that's how much i really like you know had no nothing to do with him whatsoever until um there was that year that one year um i was going through a really rough uh breakup and Mm -hmm. then like i did the the whole nine yards the whole boracay with with friends and everything party with friends yeah 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 i I just went through all the phases that's when i started working out 
so you know i just trying to find myself and and whatever and billy was going through something similar as well like he was going through like a lot of rocky stuff in his life and and during that time like his dad was already sick and everything and then his his relationship was crumbling as well and then uh, it was like an on and off thing already for him mm. and then um so like you know i mean my my breakup was pretty public his was not out yet mine was pretty mm. public at that time so he'd always ask me about it you know he'd ask me how i was doing and everything and then you know how like we have uh, those breaks in between showtime to talk mm. and everything so you know it, it became between the segments in between segments yeah, yeah it became it became those tiny banters until like mm. we're like oh but it's nice talking to this person. So, you know, because we were going through that that similar phase, right? So we were talking about how life sucked for me. And then he was talking about how life sucked for him, right? So we were there. And they were like, oh, yeah, I'm lost. Oh, yeah, I'm lost too. <laughs> so it was that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, then humor came in and everything and then like um slowly like because we had we all had each other's numbers whether we liked it or not you know you're on the same show and everything so he would text unti unti and then like for mm. example there was this camping trip and then like he gave me a tent but he was still it was still as kuya billy because i used to call kuya him billy. Billy. Okay. yes yeah. for the like the transition between kuya billy and not kuya billy was a very mm. awkward one it i can imagine <laughs> yeah it was like yeah I, I remember the first person I told was my cousin Ria at Aide. Mm. Um, I told her, Cuz, Kuya Billy's texting me. Mm. What do I say? <laughs> so I was like, Why is Kuya Billy texting me? So it, was, it was that. <laughs> it was very awkward at the start. And then um, until, you know, like he became like, it was it was just an awkward gesture. So what's was your reply? May mga, ano, may mga reply na po. How are you po? Have a great day I po. Was, You're like a... <laughs> I need naman ako po, but Kuya Billy. Kuya, Kuya Billy. Billy. Yes, yes, okay. Kuya Billy. Thank you. Thank you for the tap, Kuya Billy, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. It was always Kuya Billy. And then unti unti like it, it was it was a, it was a very gradual transition actually. Like mm-hmm. um throughout our relationship actually, everything was very like it was slow but it was fast, you know? Like mm-hmm. Like for example, he when he said I love you, it took me eleven months just to say it back. And then, you know, in retrospect, I oh, think God. that when Billy Crawford, the Billy Crawford, the Mr. <laughs> the Kuya, the Kuya, the Kuya Billy, Billy Crawford. Crawford said I love you to you. Ano sinabi mo? Uh, thanks or I know. Ani reply mo nung first time? I said that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my and god! Then, ah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then along you just like, lines. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But, yeah. That's so it was, it was something like that for eleven mm. months until eleven got months. Used to it. Eleven. Mm. You know, in retrospect, I think about it. I should have waited another month. It would have been a year. So. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been the bragging rights, right? <laughs> like you know, it took me a year whole year. Yeah, yeah, I should have waited, but I didn't yeah. know. I mean, I wasn't counting. I didn't think I wasn't mm-hmm. saying I love you for eleven months. But yeah, so our relationship was very much like that. Like, mm-hmm. I guess the only reason why it moved so fast is because it was in the public eye. So you mm-hmm. know, like there were times when, like, I would be asked, like, "Are you guys dating? Are you guys together? Are you guys mm-hmm. and, and everything?" And I'd be like, "No, we're not." And now, like, you know, eventually I ended up eating all my words because we did end up together. But the thing mm-hmm. is, like, you know, when I was being asked of that, we weren't together. He was, like, starting to text me. Company, he, was, yeah. he was starting to text me. He was talking to his friends about me, which mm-hmm. is why people were asking. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, I wasn't, like, completely, you know, there. You know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. we weren't dating. But, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how it started, and I guess it 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 moved like I said, like so fast, and yet mm. between the two of us, it was so slow. I mean, with it, with the relationship that was sort of like forming through text, through tense, and just kuya Billy all you know all day. When was like the first time he asked you? Na para bang 
let's go out. Just the two of us. Just hang out. Let's get a taco or something. Well, like, can you remember? I first, I first noticed changes. I first noticed mm-hmm. that the Kuya Billy, who was always absent every Monday, was starting to show up every Monday. And then wow. he was always <laughs> perfect attendance at work already. So I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> He's I'm always at work good. now. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> He's always at work now. Oh, I guess I'm a good influence, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, yeah, so it was mostly like, I don't even know if it was mostly through that. It was because we would we were forced to kind of see each other every day anyway. Mm-hmm. So there, he started showing up every day. The conversations just, you know, got longer, got deeper and everything. Mm-hmm. And then um, I was never really, like even before him, I was never really into like dating, dating until mm-hmm. we were like actually like really dating. If you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you're going to hang out with me, you're going to hang out with all my friends. Like, mm. if you're going to hang out with me, you're going to hang out with a plus one or something. And that plus one was always Ria Ataide. So, mm. yeah, she was always there. So we would hang out always with Ria. If it was mm. out, it was always with a lot of people. And I think that's why, like, news about us really escalated so quickly also. Because we were always out and we were always with a lot of people. And, and at that time, Vice well, was always with know. us as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vice was always out with us before. And then mm. um, whenever, like, we would just want to chill and just talk mm. and everything, it was always at my house. Like, you know, mm. I'd invite him over. And then, um, you know, sometimes, like, my mom was there and stuff. But I'd always mm. just invite him over. And we'd chill in, like, my living area. That's it. And we just mm. talk. So, me, you know, it's good on Billy. And, you know, it's no stranger when I did get to guess him on the show is that he did share with us his struggles as far as weight gain, as far as, uh, you know, drinking and yes. all that. Then he was able to, he's an inspiration of how I got in shape because I saw him do oh. it. He's doing the keto. He's doing staying focused and all that. And he was such an inspiration. That's why, you know, how was, I mean, when did he decide, because you guys were a couple now, then what made him decide? To like, I'm so, gonna get my life together, kind of, you know. So you know how, like, before, what Billy told me is because he felt like his life was always trying to, like, it was always trying to be. Um, there were always people around him trying to control his life, you know, mm. different people, like, and and so many people, you know, telling him he should stop smoking, he should stop drinking, and everything. And mm. when I got into his life, you like, I he told me this, like, I would, you know, express concern, but mm. I would never tell him to stop. Even though it was, some, it was something that I didn't really agree with. Like, I hate smoking. I hate it so mm. much because I grew up around it. And I like it's something I never personally got into. But he was smoking mm. and I just, you know, let him. And eventually, he learned on his own. And I think that it's mm. important in anyone's journey, you know. is for, When you're going to do something, you don't do it for another person. And you don't do it because the other person tells you not to do it. Because then you're just going to hide it from that person, right? And I, I've mm. been through that so many times as well in the past. Whatever it, whatever it might be, you know. It doesn't have to be smoking or drinking, whatever it is, you know, if if there's something in your life that needs to change, it will only change if you yourself want mm. to change it. It's not going to change. It's not going to happen if someone tries to bring it out of you, you know. So mm. with him, you know, he had to, it was harder. It was it was a rough road for him, like um, quitting cigarettes, for example. I think he's like seven years seven or eight years hasn't smoked so that like you know he went through a personal downfall for that Mm. to happen and even drinking you know he was an alcoholic when i met him he was a heavy like honestly it was really it was really the party scene yeah because yeah no no but but no but no because like when i would party with him i would drink you know i would drink Mm. but when i get home i don't drink and he Mm. like he would finish an entire bottle on his own when he was home Mm. This is like, you know, when I met him, when I met him, he was at this state where he was drinking alone every day and he'd finish a bottle of, of um, whiskey on his own. And this was almost every day. So he, he was an alcoholic and he admits to that. So it, he had to um, he had to go through something as well, another personal downfall mm. that caused him to because he, at first he tried it. He tried to mm. to quit alcohol at first, and he he didn't completely want to. And mm. then um, again, when he went back to drinking alcohol, um, he went through something heavy, and then he mm. decided, okay, I'm going to promise God. And when you promise God, you know. 
like of course you're not gonna break it you can promise me mm-hmm. and then eventually you're gonna break it because it's just me if one day you're pissed at me you know you, you might mm-hmm. just break that rule diba? but he promised god on his own i like i never asked him to um he mm-hmm. promised god that he was never gonna drink again and you know it's not completely bad to drink like mm-hmm. i would i would drink if i wanted to but it's just what it brought out of him you know mm-hmm. like the demons the, you know yeah, 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 he was very suppressed. And mm-hmm. when I met him, like he had so many things he was suppressing, like for years. Mm-hmm. Like he was just so suppressed. And when we started dating, all of that just came out, you know, headline. What made you what made you what made you what made you stay? Like, you know, thank you for sharing, you know, all that because it's gonna be, yeah. you know, very, very inspiring. But what made you stay in the relationship if it's like that? Well, there were so many times that I tried to leave because um, in any relationship that I've ever been in and before, prior to Billy, like my mm. relationships would never go past a year and mm. I didn't have a lot of them. Like, you know, I just was the type to like, if I see that, you know, okay, this isn't cool for me anymore. I'm going to leave. Like, I don't want to mm. put up with this anymore. I'm balance. always the first to leave. Yeah. Mm. And then um, with Billy is he just never let me leave (laughs) (laughs) he just always fought he just always fought for me and Mm. well that's that's all i can credit it to because like Mm. i've tried to give up so many times so i can't say Mm. that oh the reason why we're together is because i'm so strong i i never gave up on him and everything no Mm. i gave up so many times but he was always there chasing after me and you know um because a lot of times it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> so he got it. Like what? No, no. Yeah, okay. No, it, I mean... was, it was never, all I can say is it was never anything too deep because mm. it was always enhanced now that time by alcohol. So our mm. fights were always enhanced by alcohol. And ever since he quit, you know, it, it was a huge change, not just in, in his life, but also in our relationship, you know, mm. because there were those unnecessary fights they just wouldn't happen anymore but i can't say that we don't fight anymore because even to this day we really get to each other's nerves but so what do you I guys think... fight about now like at these oh times. my gosh the smallest <laughs> things like uh, oh my gosh you you will never okay you think that you get over the big things right you think mm. that you will not fight like bad anymore because you got rid of all those big things right you already overcame them but mm. then all that happens is the little things become big things. <laughs> That's all it is. So <laughs> now it's like the little things that we fight about. It's like Laundry. Like, gala, yeah, like, I think like at the end of the day, like all it is, is you're projecting. All, mm. At least for us. It's you're just you're projecting your frustrations. Nilalabas mo na lang. So mm. even though this person didn't like outwardly like, offend you or do anything completely you know um horrible to you it's Mm. still a fight because you just want to bring all the emotion out and like that's been me for the past two years because i've just been at home you know like i'm (laughs) so frustrated i have not slept and you know see like for example just as simple as that like the Mm. fact that he can sleep the whole night every night and i Mm. can't I mean, that's so annoying. It's so <laughs> you're annoying. Take it, you know what I mean? You're going to take it on him, right? Because you guys are such hands on him. Like, I'm not going to make your life easy. My life's so hard. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's as simple as that sometimes. But yeah, it's, it's just never... Because fighting is usually emotional. So mm. our fights are usually emotional. It's it, He has not done anything bad like really bad to me you know that's what i can say and i guess that's the reason why we've held on also this long because i think Mm. if he really did something bad to me like if he physically cheated on me or anything we would not be together for sure like so Mm. anyone out there who's listening like if you if there's something that you just would not put up with don't put Mm. up with it like no matter how long you've been together yeah Mm. Okay, I'm learning something new, ladies and gentlemen. We have Colleen <laughs> Garcia Crawford. She's tuning. She's with us. Uh, of course, she's gonna talk about her comeback. Now you know. So, when he proposed, where was this? When did this was, happen? Where was this? It was in a restaurant, and mm-hmm. like I guess going into it, I don't know if I like. Okay, I I think I had a feeling that he was going to propose anyway because he's just he's he's super. He cannot hide anything like. He can't hide anything from me. He was sweating. He was like, like diarrhea and everything. He was just all over the place. 
and he was so nervous and I just knew that something was up and I knew that that was gonna come like sooner or later because we were of course we were talking about it it's not like you know we never talked about marriage and proposals and anything and then just out of nowhere he's been proposed to me right I mean that's of course that's something we discussed and he would always ask me too like um how did I want to like you know to what if one day like somebody somebody would propose to me or if he would propose to me like how what was my dream and i said you know i I just wanted something simple in front of all my family not all but Mm -hmm. like as many people in my life as possible Mm -hmm. like my family and my close friends and he made that happen it was um right before we left for spain so Mm -hmm. we weren't gonna spend christmas here so he made sure to do something memorable before we left for Mm -hmm. spain so did he sing did he sing like his songs and then oh he would yeah. he would have cracked the whole time if he had to say <laughs> so nervous that guy i'm I'm glad he didn't have to do much <laughs> i mean you know and then you guys of course get married then you have a baby now the journey of having a baby for you guys to actually share that story to the world about water birth now who decided yes. on this who decided on this and of course when you make that decision it's the whole family it involves oh, yeah. a lot of people so uh, you know who researched on it? Who's you know what were the benefits for it for you guys? If you if you could share with us. Well, um, it all came down to me the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like that for everyone. I mean, of course, there are times when, for example, the husband wouldn't agree and everything. So I'm I'm just glad that from the start, um, regardless of how I wanted to give birth. Billy was there and he said, I'm just going to go with what you want and I'm here to support you and to make things easier for you, regardless mm-hmm. of how you want to do it. So I said that I wanted, oh, um, I wanted to do the water birth in a hospital at first, ideally. Mm-hmm. But then because of the pandemic, um, they put a stop to it, a um, temporary stop to it. I don't know if they're back like um, entertaining that again, if, if they're allowing it again. But at that time, it wasn't allowed. And what also wasn't allowed were husbands in mm-hmm. um, the delivery room. And mm-hmm. his dad wasn't there when he was born. Mm-hmm. And he he actually kind of feels bad about that. Not mm-hmm. for himself, but for his dad, you know? Like, mm-hmm. he, I'm, I'm sure he, he can kind of understand how his dad felt during that time. And he said he doesn't ever want to go through that. So he made sure that, you know, he would be here this entire time um, that I was, you know, close to giving birth. So mm-hmm. it just made me sad, you know, to, and a lot of people had to go through that through the pandemic. And I commend the women who went through that, like who went through labor and delivery on their own in the mm-hmm. hospital. It's scary. It's, it's hard. And with me, I just didn't want, you know, I didn't want to be away from Billy. I wanted it to be a shared experience between the both of us, especially um, Amari's our first child. So mm-hmm. I wanted to share that with him. And um, so I, I decided on the water birth at home because mm-hmm. it wasn't available anywhere else. And I was just like, I really want the water birth. I want the water birth because I I feel like the water will bring me great relief. You know, I like mm-hmm. I said, I looked up on it. Um, by researching That's a trauma, no? I, That's a trauma and recovery as I well, mean, right? I I guess, but the fact that there's no epidural, it mm. might be more, you know, traumatic for some because mm. it was so painful. Like, it was really painful. It's the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my whole life. Mm. And nothing comes close to it, really. And you can't do it with an epidural. You can't do it with painkillers or anything because, mm. you know, your legs would just be like spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, true, you true. Know, it's, it's just dangerous. You might actually drown or something <laughs> if mm. you're on an epidural there. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was really um, an experience for us. But I'm happy. I'm so happy we did it that mm. way. And not only that, like my mom was there, my brother was there. Um, my brother, I don't know if he wants to have children anymore. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, I can't. Yeah. But, but, but I could imagine the journey and I thank you for, for sharing it with us, you know, the, the journey of giving birth. And I mean, we could somehow understand that it is sort of scary when you're going to give birth in the middle of pandemic. Nah, you have nobody familiar to be there yeah. with you, you're just going to have a lot of people with PPEs and you don't see who they are and the baby's yeah. going to come out and, you know, having family nearby to share the experience. I mean, this is I something, wanted, it's a milestone. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to have the baby in a very, um, as natural a birth as possible. I know it's not very natural to have a baby in water, but it was great. It was a great relief for me. Like, I didn't care 
<laughs> I mean TMI, but like it, it was it was better because your body expands mm. more in water, right? So that was mm. better for me in that way. And I think just for that, like I want to keep doing it that way if I can. Mm. But you know, birth in any way, like in uh, wh- whatever form, it's just giving birth is scary, whatever mm. it is, because it's unpredictable. Um, mm. And like for me, like. I know I did it already at home and even though I can, even though I was able to, even though I overcame it, even though I know mm-hmm. like more or less what to expect, I still, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I want to do it still in a hospital next because you can't predict. You can't predict what's going to happen and it's good yeah, to yeah, have, sure. you know, emergency backup plans. So hopefully there is no <laughs> pandemic the next time that I give birth. Yeah. Um, sana naman by then wala na. <laughs> Are you guys but, planning to have how many how many babies you and Oh Billy my gosh. Now? Like uh, we used to be like, oh let's have four, let's have six. I'm like, I'm okay with two now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, whatever God good. gives us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever we, God gives us. That is always of course blessing. And you always share this, you know, on your YouTube channel. You guys do share it. It's at the Crawfords. That's a channel, right? That you guys do. Yes, yes, we are so not active, but we try mm-hmm. to at least be active for milestones. <laughs> so that it's you know, there. One, one thing I did come to see as well is your postpartum journey, the man. Okay. So yes. when you gave birth, okay, and then you have a baby, I mean, with the showbiz. Was that on the side? Was that like, ah, sa yan. Ano muna ako? Focus on the baby. Now, the postpartum recovery and getting back into it. What got you to document that? What inspired you for that one? Well, um, people talk about it so much. But mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, people share the before and after. They don't share so much about the in-between. So mm-hmm. I wanted, like, while it was all happening... Just to document it so that in the future, you know, I can personally look back on it. But also, I love watching stuff like that. You know, I, mm-hmm. I love watching um, other women's stories. And even if it's just like two people who's going to watch it, even if it's just, mm-hmm. you know, like one person who gets affected by it, then, you know, that per- that one person could be me, you know, like how I'm affected mm-hmm. by what other people post. And I think there's just so much content out there in the world in general. Like you can mm-hmm. find those kinds of stories everywhere. But I mean, like sometimes the people, like for example, the people who follow me, I don't, I don't know if a lot of them um, see postpartum in this way. So I, I just want to share like my take on it because, like I said, it wasn't glamorous. It's it wasn't um, pretty at all, and like there were so many moments when I just, you know, I didn't even feel like myself anymore. And I feel like until now. That I'm still trying to regain that sense of self. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not there yet. I wouldn't say that I'm there yet. And I don't think that it's motherhood per se. I think it's mm-hmm. just, you know, this whole pandemic as well. It's been true, very true. restricting. Yeah, it's been, yeah. um, you know, I can't even like, I can't even, for example, go out. I can't work. For, for first mm-hmm. thing, like I can't work. And work, I used to enjoy work. And I do enjoy work so much. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't want to leave Amari, and I'm I'm very privileged that I get to bring Amari to work. Like this last film mm-hmm. that I did, he was there um the whole time. But mm-hmm. like, I I just miss being able to do that. I miss being able to go to work. I miss being able to mm-hmm. go out to have a meal with a friend. I did not do that the entire. I mean, I probably did it like once or twice. Uh, I miss... eh, no? Namask, yeah, yeah. You don't see the smile. It's different when you're out, right? Yes, it's and and you go out and you have this overwhelming sense of fear and guilt, you know. Mm-hmm. So like guilt because I'm a mom and I'm putting myself at risk, thus putting my baby at risk, you know. Mm-hmm. So it it was just like that for two years for me, for almost two years because um the pandemic started when I was still pregnant, and mm-hmm. obviously we're at we were at risk for that as well being pregnant. So mm-hmm. yeah, like it it was it was a sacrifice to say the least. I mean, I mean, now, you know, you're back. You do have a project. Yes. And, and what made you decide, okay, so for those who don't know, she's part of like a gang movie, <laughs> right? Yes. You guys are like a bunch of mobsters. <laughs> so she gives birth. She does it the natural way. And guess what? She joins a gang. So uh, yes. tell, us, tell us about this film. Tell us about what made you say yes to the project. 
Oh yeah, um, I just it was something different. It was something mm. that I haven't done, so I'm all for that. Like I'm all for doing something different from the previous roles. So this is actually my first film, um, by Viva. Like my mm. first film completely by Viva, and um, there are many more to come, which I'm very mm. excited about. So this film, um, I I love first and foremost. I love the script. So that's mm. always my first thing to consider is the script. If the script is nice, if the story is nice, and if I can, you know, visualize it, because I'm I'm very much like that. Like when I'm reading something, I really visualize it. So mm-hmm. I I visualize the shots. I visualize like you know er, like everything. Like my imagine my imagination just goes wild. And I I saw it and I was like, hmm, fire on, this has a lot of potential. And 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 um, the one directing it, John Red, direct John Red, he was also the one who wrote it. So you know mm. when it's a di- writer director that like, okay, he has a solid vision for where this mm. is gonna go. And then also um the cast, the cast. Mm. Grab your cast, that was, was, that was enough for me to say yes. Yeah, that yeah. was enough for me to say yes. The cast, like when I saw it, I was like, okay. I'm in. <laughs> it's like, okay, so we're about to see the trailer. On air, I'm going to play a song, but here online, you guys are going to watch a trailer, and then we'll be back. Once again, for those that are tuned in here on The Monster, we have Colleen Garcia Crawford. She is joining us. Here's a track for you from Chris Brown. But here online, we continue, ladies and gentlemen, for those that are watching us, uh, let's check out the trailer, the movie is called Adarna Gang. This is the title, right? Yes, Adarna, Adarna yeah. Gang. Here we go. Let's check us out. Para sa akin, kayong tatlo ay iisa. Higit pa sa magkakapatid. Magkadikit kayo. Yan ang alas ninyo. Tandaan ninyo. Pagkakaisa. Sabi nga sa mga alamat, ang mga kaharian ay nagsisimulang maliit. Parang revolusyon din yan. Tigil muna tayo sa bato! Ha? Marami na akong nasaksihan. Hindi natin kailangan tumigil katulad sinabi ni Papang. Sinabi ni Papang na tumigil. May sakit ang hari na may anak ng tatlong prinsipe at ang gamot ay ang nakakagayumang awit ng isang mahiwagang ibon. Nalaga na si Adriana. <laughs> at kapag nahalina ka sa kanyang magandang awit, makakatulog ka. Didiskarte mo si Adriana. Pwede ba manihimik muna kayo? Nasisira ang diskarte ko eh. Para sa mga ito! Papawad! Kung sino man ang unang makahanap kay Adriana, siya ang papalit kay Fernando. Hinahanap pa rin ba niya si Adriana? <laughs> Yung bobo mo kapatid! Ang bobo-bobo nun, Brad. Anong balak mo? Papatayin ko si lahat. That is, uh, that is a masterpiece. We're about to go on air, but we are live online. We have Colleen Garcia. Let's bring you guys back. Here we go. It's Monster X93.1. We have her live. We just got to witness the trailer for Adarna Gang. We have Colleen Garcia Crawford. She is joining us. The movie, the Hello trailer. Hello again. Grabe. Um, it reminds you of The Godfather slash Ibon Adarna. I mean, yes. Yes. So actually, the reason why it's called Adarna Gang is because it is loosely based or actually inspired 
by the yung kwento ng Ibong Adarna. And yeah, it's right. something that I guess if you grew up here in the Philippines, you are definitely familiar with. Uh, like mm. I I had to study that in school. And um so the, the, like the, there are characters named after the characters from, you know, the the story of Ibong Adarna. Mm. And there are a lot of elements that were taken from it as well. Although the story is not quite like it. Like, it, like that's mm. why I said it, it's inspired by rather than like you know it's not an adaptation or something it's it's inspired by the story and um this is something that direct john has had for 15 years you know just galing, kept galing. inside somewhere <laughs> he just kept it for 15 years and it's finally out uh by tonight 12 midnight mm -hmm. in on viva max and yeah so it's Okay, I, one thing I want to, uh, that I enjoy explaining is that it's an action drama film, but it's not so heavy on the action. If you mm -hmm. watch the trailer, there's like a lot of action going on, but the overall tone is given by the song, you know? Mm -hmm. You know how it's like, it's so toned down, eerie almost? Like, mm -hmm. that is the entire vibe of the film, I feel. Like, it's not like, bah, 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 in every mm -hmm. scene, you know? Um, yeah, so I feel like that's what makes it different. And mm. it's not like, um, like if I were to do an all out action film in the future, it would be mm. completely different from this one because this mm. isn't like your typical action film. It's really, um, it has a lot story of story line, you know? it's storyline, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what so, I was saying. It, it made me feel like The Godfather. If you got to watch yeah. uh, The Godfather, even even the the the, the tone of and the, the way the Adarna the girl was singing, I was like, yes, whoa, galing, galing, galing. Yeah, so yes. this is something to look forward to. But you know, Colleen, go ahead, invite everybody to watch your film. Yes, um, Adarna Gang is out tomorrow on Viva Max. Actually, tonight at 12 midnight, if you're going to stay up late, you might as well watch it tonight. Um, it's a great film by John Red. Um, it stars a bunch of amazing actors. Like, there's way too many to mention right now. But um, for you guys to watch this, because I get this question a lot, like, how do you, mm. got, how do you watch this film? You just have to download Viva Max on your app store. So whether that's Android or iPhone or, or whatever phone you have, just download Viva Max. Um, subscribe, which is 149 pesos a month. And for the 149 pesos a month, you get to have it on multiple devices. You get to cast it on your TV so you can watch everything on your TV. And we have tons, a lot, a lot, 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 lot of exclusive content, movies, TV shows that you will only get to watch on Viva Max and mm -hmm. a lot more to come. Um, even for me in the future, a lot of the films that I'll be doing will be released on Viva Max. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to stay updated with all the new releases from Viva, Viva Max is the place. So it's just safe to say that it's full on comeback for you in show business. Yeah, we're excited. For yeah. You. Yeah, yeah. And any future <laughs> projects that you could share? Are you going to be doing a TV show as well? Or is it just strictly movies for now well i think it's gonna be mostly film for now i don't wanna i mean never say never as long mm. as i get to bring amari to work i'm game <laughs> mm. all right cool well thank you very much you know for taking time i know you have a lot of more interviews you know you're on the press tour now but thank you for yes. taking time to join thank us and you thank you also. For for sharing with us your journey. Sobrang and dami yeah. namin natutunan. You know, Bits and pieces. Everything. Yeah. Uh, of all the cuentas. And we'll catch you again next time. Hopefully, we have you here in the studio with Billy and, and of course, Lil Baby yes. as well. Yes, all right? hopefully soon. Right, take care. Thank all right, you. Have a great Bye. one. Bye-bye. Right? There you Bye. have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those that are tuning in, we just had Colleen Garcia Crawford, the movie. It is coming out midnight. We hope you guys enjoyed our interview. Um, you get to learn a thing or two about motherhood. It's a great way to celebrate Women's Month here on The Monster. Till then, for Facebook, for YouTube, for Twitch, more on air, by the way. My name is Rico Robles. Thank you guys for watching. Monster exclusive interview only on Manila's hottest Monster RX 93.1.